I was Brad I'm Bradley Davis, and I was born about 150 yards right down the street on February the 25th, 1909. Well, um, our schoolhouse was a three-room building, rock building, where the lodge hall is now. It was one story. Now, they, they were, uh, uh, a third room was on the west side of those two rooms there, where the, the, the elementary school was in the east wing. The high school was occupied the uh, center place, and the, the junior high level was on the west side, uh, just a, stone, a, rock, I mean, a wooden building, wooden room on the west side of that. And then in, in the early 20s, when they were building the, uh, just building 290, well, then they remodeled that old house. They took the two rooms, the one off of the west side, and built another story on it. And so that's, that's when that became then a, a full-fledged high school. Well, uh, we, we were pretty lucky because we lived right next door to school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they, usually they started about at nine, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, people that lived away from town had to ride either horseback or in a buggy. Mm -hmm. We had just about four acres here, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have very, very many things to do. So our, our time was pretty much on our own. I see, I see. Now our house, was right in the middle of a pretty good sized yard. Uh -huh. And so, since my father died, see, before I was two, my mother kept a pretty tight rein on my, uh -huh. on my brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. And uh, so that, that was the playground yes. for the whole community was in our yard. Uh -huh. And anybody wanted to know where the kids were, they went over to Davis's. <laughs> there were 10 of us, if there were 13 next door, there were seven just a little way above here, the Spall family. Then on the other side, the Dye family had about six or seven. Well, <clears throat> her, <clears throat> they, she lived down in Cedar Valley. I see. And uh, her husband was, she was Aunt Eveline, and her husband, Uncle Alec, who brought the mail up here. Oh, I see. And that was an interesting thing. That now it took all day to go from here to Austin with by horse, uh, by horse and buggy mm -hmm. or a ride, but he made a round trip every day. Wow! Now how did he do it? Mm. Well, he lived down there, just uh, well. The highway department has a yard there close to where he lived, mm -hmm. and uh, he had four of the finest team of horses mm -hmm. that money could buy. Yes, sir. Well, we'll just name them uh, Team A, B, C, and D mm -hmm. for convenience. All right, about three o'clock in the morning, he would leave home with Team, well, at first, he'd put Team A in the wagon yard mm -hmm. in Austin, mm -hmm. the Leonard Eagles wagon yard. Mm -hmm. All right, now, to, then uh, about three o'clock in the morning, he would take Team B and race them to Austin all the way just as fast as they could go. And he'd get to the wagon yard and trade teams. Mm -hmm. Pick up team A and leave B. Mm -hmm. All right, with the, uh, team C then that he picked up, he would get the mail and anything that people wanted him to bring back. And then he would race them back to dripping, uh, to, uh, to his home. Mm -hmm. And then he would take uh, the, no, the last one and race them to Dripping Spring, and then let we trot them back, and so that, that way, well, every every third day was free for those horses, but because he would race them those short distances each time like that, so he made a round trip every day. He got up to Dripping Spring about mid afternoon with the mail and whatever uh, things that the people wanted to bring out for him. Well, uh, we had played uh, marbles, <laughs> the big game, mm -hmm. and every little boy had a pocket knife. Yeah, sure. And we played mumbly pig. Uh -huh. Do you know about mumbly pig? Yes, sir, I do. Well, we played mumbly pig. Uh -huh. 
and little things like that. And then they uh, they would uh, play. They just throw the base baseball around. We didn't have much of a playground there. It was just the open space south of the old building, covered co uh, covered with gravel. Uh -huh. And then they got they somebody gave them a basketball. They throw the but we didn't have at first. Uh, we just uh, did, didn't have uh, really a, a teams there. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when they got uh, uh, big enough uh, schools around, you see Dripping Springs was kind of the center of a wheel, with the, it was being the center, and there was uh, Oak Hill, I mean Cedar Valley, mm -hmm. and Fitzhugh, mm -hmm. and then uh, 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 Bell Spring, mm -hmm. And then over at uh, Hamilton Pool, and uh, then um, Henley, mm -hmm. yep. and Mount Sharp, Mount Gainer, Driftwood, mm -hmm. and there's two or three uh, little schools. But at one time or another, there were 13 little one-teacher schools Incredible. in the area right around here. Amazing. Then when, uh, when uh, <coughs> automobiles came into being, and people began buying them, and be, they would begin to, to consolidate mm -hmm. and into schools. And it was, uh, oh, the, the rivalry <coughs> between these two, these various little schools were quite uh, intense. Well, not just intense, they were hostile. Anytime really? we went to play baseball, for example, there would always be fistfights take place. Mm -hmm. There were certain families just simply didn't they didn't agree to to anything but a but a, a big brawl fist fight. <laughs> well, uh, that uh, uh, after they got to, to pave roads and automobiles, then they began and consolidating the school. That rivalry uh, uh, cooled off quite a bit, and then. Not many years ago, there was a young lady who played basketball at, for Dripping Spring whose father had grown up at Mount Gaylor. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting there to me at a high school basketball game, and he was rooting for Molly. Well, now that she was on the Dripping Springs team, so then he was, was rooting for Dripping Spring. So I turned to him and said, Forrest, I said, <laughs> You amaze me. What was that? <clears throat> I said, well, that, uh, you know, when you've seen everything, it's time to die. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, when you've seen everything, it's time to die. Yeah. Well, what, are you, what, are, what, what have you seen? I said, I have seen a guy from Mount Gaynor rooting for Driven Spring. <laughs> Graduated in 32, which is right at the very, uh, it was, that was the very height uh, or depth, I might say, of the Great Depression. Now, I was a pre-med student for about three years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in fact, I became a real good friend to a young man whose grandfather had reared him up at Plainview. And uh, he was uh, fairly wealthy. And he was going to send me and his grandson to medical school. But that was when the bottom went to the out, and uh, instead of getting a dollar twenty to thirty cents for his wheat, he got nineteen cents. Oh, God. So that put a stop to that. Well, I changed over from pre-med to education, I see. and I've been happy ever since that I did, I because uh, then when I graduated as, uh, with uh, teaching certification. And then I was a, uh, had a hard time finding a job. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to Dallas and worked as a sort of a, 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 a carpenter for a while. <clears throat> there, while I was trying to find something, some place to teach school, and I came back here, and a young lady was leaving the junior high level to go into homemaking. And uh, so uh, 
I took over and finished her school year. Now, our school year was five months in length. The salary was $80. So I had taught school 35 years, but that was a paid vacation. That good. <laughs> that we, we had more fun, uh -huh. and it was, it was a picnic every day. Uh, from then on, it was, the, the war was on. So then I went to Miami Beach then for six weeks, and then we shipped by train to, to, to uh, Randolph Field for assignment, and then went back to Houston to Ellington Field, where I stayed for two and a half years as an uh, Air Force ground instructor. Yeah, so we well, we were not flyers; we were we were just ground instructors at these uh, meteorology and uh, anything like that. See, and uh, so uh, anyhow, well, I worked on that. Then and then, after about two and a half years of that, um, <clears throat> they knew that they were going to win the war, but they didn't know when. And besides, when the last shots fired. What are we going to do with our men while they waited to go home? Well, let's put them in school. They went into school. So I was fortunate in having been chosen to go to Italy for 15, for, for uh, uh, well, to set up an education program all the way from elementary through college. I worked on the college level, and I was the only person who worked all the way through that from the order order, order to the uh, locating it, setting it up, operating it, and closing it out. And I was there every day of that whole time. The Apple White store was a grocery, it's just a general store with oh, just a general everything, clothing and, and, and all. And it was, oh, well, the, this, you know where the thrift shop is, uh, and uh, the, the, and where they, uh, the the corner store down there, where it was uh, the garage for a long time. There was no wooden building right there. That was the Applewhite store. I see. And then the, uh, the Patterson store was the one over there to the west of where the post office is in that rock building. Yes, sir. And then across the street from that was another rock store, the Dave Jones grocery store, and those are. Now those those two are still there, see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they had practically practically everything that that uh, you you would need out here. And then the, there was another grocery store on down where uh, and now there's a music store. Uh, at the end of that, there was the Carter's grocery store mm -hmm. was there. And then where there was a, a used to be a filling station. Right next to the old Patterson store, a big two-story square building mm -hmm. had eight rooms in there, yes, sir. and it was the, what was called the old hotel. Mm -hmm. It was uh, uh, four four rooms upstairs and four down, okay. and, and there was an old well, well and a windmill right near the corner of where, where the post office is. Mm -hmm. That was where they uh, there was a community. A, a, a tank there with a trough around the front of it for people to water their horses. Mm -hmm. It was a little difficult to get down to the, the creek from there, right. so, so they fixed it. And they, now then there, there's one of those old stores, one of those old uh, tanks is left at, uh, I think the only one in the state of Texas, at Driftwood. I see. And it when it was being pretty well badly torn down to, till a few years back. When I started raising rookies about that, so they redid it and put a fence around it and all. But that's, I think that's the only one. Yeah. one of those. Now there are a good many of those rock tanks out on the ranches. Yes. But for a community yes. tank there for people to water their horses yes. when they came to the big town, yeah. Yeah. they had a place to to take care of their horse while they were there. But uh, you remember the first car you saw here in town? 
No, I don't remember the first one that I ever saw because we'd go to Austin and see them. Maybe that's where. The, but was the, there the a first one steamer? I ever rode in. Yes. That was an old Stanley steamer. Okay. They belonged to a cousin in Austin, and my elder brother borrowed it and came out here so we could see it. And all, but he left it sitting too long. The fire was out. Oh my goodness! So we had to build a fire in the firebox so he could take us for a ride. A Stanley. And so we went up the road here, nearly at the top of the hill this way. We went up uh, toward Johnson City. Oh, I don't know, about a mile out that way. We went up the Creek Road a short way. We went down to the Norwoods house that way. We went up to the Wallace Mountain uh, this way, and they came on back. But that was the first automobile that I ever rode in. Mm -hmm. I, I was amazed not long ago when someone told me that they had asked this elderly lady what was the biggest change that her, in her lifetime. And she said, screen wire. Screen wire, wow. Flies were so bad. Flies, sure, sure. And I remember when I was a child, we didn't have screen wire. Uh -huh. And, and the, the flies would be so bad that you, you, you have to, somebody had to brush the had to keep, keep in motion mm -hmm. over your, your dinner table. Yeah. Keep the flies off of yes, sir. your food. Sure. See, it, it the one they first <laughs> put electricity to the school. Mm -hmm. They got playing basketball out on the court there. They had, would hang a basket, had a hundred one light, light bulb at each end of the court. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. There was lighted, lighted basketball. Court. Lighted basketball, I'll be darned. There'd be one light bulb hanging in the classroom. Uh huh. And I know when we moved out to the ranch out there, uh, we had a phone shortly, and there were 16 phones on that line. You had a party line, big yeah. party line. Yeah. 16, and wow. Our number was two longs and a short. Uh huh. I'll be darned. If you know what that means. Yeah. I do. My grandparents had a phone. Like I grew that. up with so when you, and when you rang, if the phone rang, you could count the, uh, the people picking up their telephone to, to eavesdrop. Yes, yes. I remember my mother was talking to an um, old man about his livestock. See, we had that 1100 acre ranch out there, and um, uh, this guy was a, a dealer. He'd buy up livestock and put them in our place. I think it, it was 25 cents a day for a head of cattle in there, but he lived over at Fitzhugh, mm -hmm. and he bring the them down to uh, Barton Creek and put them in over there, and Mama had no way to, to check up on him, and, and she considered him trustworthy and dependable, so he kept his own books. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, he was talking, uh, to the, to dis discussing, uh, she was talking with him on the phone, and when she hung up, phone rang, she said, hey, Miss Kate, I was late getting to the phone a while ago, she said, I didn't understand you, and I just, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> School bus drivers here for Dripping Spring, can you tell us a little about that? Well, they had built an old, they got an old Chevrolet truck and took the back end of the cab out mm -hmm. and then put a, a big box on there. Uh -huh. <laughs> My goodness. And then they put a seat down the a board right down the middle. Uh-huh. And so they and then the first one, they didn't have any muffler on it. Oh, you know, the exhaust would come out of the manifold and go down just near to the ground and you could hear the thing for two months. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we would go out, uh, went, I went down to, oh, uh, well, where the uh, recycling, uh, down, that was the end of the line down that way. Okay. Well, now, wait a minute. At first, I went on down to, to Driftwood. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then uh, I, well, no, at, at first, it just stopped there to recycling. Then. Later, we went to Driftwood, but uh, <clears throat> the kids would get in and out of the, the bus through the front door. Mm -hmm. So you, and it's, since the back was gone out of, from the cab to the bus there, see? Yes, sir. And then we had 
a canvas curtain it, <laughs> when it rained yeah. wow. or got cold. Here, uh, it's a remarkable time span. No, it has been a, a most delightful place to grow up in. We've had very little bit of crime of any kind. It's just a, a robbery or anything like that is just almost unheard of even today. And uh, it was just, uh, has been a, just a real fortunate experience to grow up here. Good place to be. Mm -hmm. See, there were no foreign elements, no, uh, no bother, to, no bother uh, at all. And if when people began to come in, other people came in, they were, they were just assimilated right into the community. Mm -hmm. So it's been an accepting community for newcomers. Yeah. Now, uh, like you mentioned, churches uh, for many years, we only we had church service every Sunday. There'd be the Baptist would have a, a preacher come one Sunday, the Methodists and the Hex. They'd swell back and forth like that. I'm 